Lycopods are something you may or may not have heard of before, but they're plants that basically diverged from all other plants that we know of today long, long ago. They really serve as a window into the past. Looking at lycopods today, we might be able to understand what the world was like long, long before we were around, long before the dinosaurs were around even, or any of our ancestors with backbones were even on land. These plants were around and were dominant in many habitats. I got interested in lycopods back in high school, and it was sort of a strange hobby, if you will, uh, that brought me to this group of plants. I, I hated plants when I was a kid, and when I say hate, that's not, that's not an exaggeration. I thought they were really boring, and I thought anyone who would take the time to study them must have a really boring career. And here I am today as a botanist, not only studying plants, but dead plants. So uh, my, my childhood self would hate me. But uh, what, what really got me into them was I got a Venus flytrap in high school and very quickly realized that, well, here's an organism that can trap, kill, and eat an animal without a brain. And it doesn't even have to move really that much to do it. So maybe there's something really different about plants that I, have, I haven't been looking at. So I started growing and collecting exotic carnivorous plants and eventually realized that, hey, there's these really weird looking other plants that grow alongside carnivores in all of their habitats. And they turned out to be lycopods. Since lycopods have been around for a long time, they're not just an obsession for me, they're actually a tool that I can use to maybe understand what's going on in the past. They evolved their leaves and roots independently of all other plants. And they even eventually evolved a reproductive sort of strategy, similar to making seeds, entirely independently of our seed plants today. So in a way, they've basically invented the same sort of body plan and they actually beat the other plants to it by millions of years they figured out how to make leaves. This here is a lycopod that lives around the world in the tropics and it's called Lycopodiella. It doesn't really have a good common name under, other than staghorn club moss. But a really cool thing about this plant is that it grows around volcanoes. We don't really know why but it can grow in very, very nasty conditions. If you go to Hawaii in Volcanoes National Park, this is the only plant that you will see growing around vents near the big volcano on the big island of Hawaii. And I've seen some of these with runners going down into these hot steaming vents, maybe 15 feet, and they root in to the sides of the walls and some of their spores you can find germinating in superheated mud and there's all sorts of poison gases coming out of these vents. So one of the things I hope to look at some days, just what makes these plants tick? How do they survive in this condition and why this species? Um, but it's just one, one sort of instance where lycopods, as we're starting to learn a little more about them, we know so little about them now, uh, what we are seeing is that these guys are stress tolerators. They deal with environmental challenges that other plants just can't take for whatever reason. And yet, they're very dainty. This plant is very hard to grow. And in fact, I probably should miss this right now because if it doesn't get enough water, it dries out and dies. So you can't grow it like a house plant. So how could something so sensitive be so good at surviving for mil hundreds of millions of years? And that's sort of one of my goals as a graduate student is to figure out what makes these plants work and not work.